Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Packer Universe podcast. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast, a couple Wisconsin guys bringing you topical and relevant Packers news, along with our most humble, subjective opinions. This is episode 251. We're recording this on a Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. The Packers lose to the New York Giants on the road this past Monday night, but now look to Sunday, where we have Bay versus Bay, Tampa Bay coming into Green Bay. I'm your host, Tay, and joining me on the comms tonight is our one and only. Ren, what up, Tay? Yeah, a battle of the Bays upcoming on Sunday in Green Bay. Tay, the, the old NFC Central rival, Tampa Bay, once upon a time, Yuccaneers <laughs> facing our Green Bay Packers. Um, but Tay, let's have a little fun and relive Ugh. the magic <laughs> yeah. that was yeah. Monday night. Um, let's clutch some money and talk about that 22 24 loss to our guy, Tommy DeVito. And the New York Giants. I mean, they 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 just ramped this guy up on TV. Everywhere was ramped up. I mean, I haven't seen this sort of like you know like I don't know boost in a long time. To a, you know maybe maybe not even Brock Purdy. I think got this treatment, um, but everyone just loves it. I don't know if that's the New York thing to do or this was just like. I don't know. Is it almost condescending to be like, ah, you you were backup rookie quarterback, uh, but you're the best. You got it. We have the power of Devito, and it's like, really, guys? Like, yeah, he was good, and he, you know, el- eluded a lot of our sack opportunities. But I mean, I mean, this guy was like the the uh, the Brady Purdy combination savior to rule all of NFL football for the next twenty years. It sounds like, anyway. Uh yeah, Ren, do you you really want to go into this uh, this game here? I mean, ugh. I mean, not really today. I mean, you you heard me on the the first take. I mean, that was certainly I could have done a lot of better things with my time Monday night than that. <laughs> well, that's that kind of dumpster, waste, isn't it? That, that watch that dumpster fire occur. I mean, it was Jordan Love, like I said, with his floppy, fuzzy footballs. Those things just floated. I mean. You know, when we talked about the, the you know, quarterback school at JTO a couple of weeks ago and, you know, watching that, it was amazing. A thing of beauty with him against the Chiefs and him getting, in, you know, one, two, three drop, getting to his hitch and go. He was double hitching on passes, Tay. He was like click and then oh, another click and then just floating things, throwing behind guys. I mean, honestly, I, it had to be Jordan Love's worst game of the season, Tay. Um <laughs> And there were some bad ones, but yeah, he, right. yeah. he was, he was awful. He looked awful. He was hard to watch. It was a hard watch. The, there um, was there, there was that one interception and they never really showed the replay on it. That one that kind of like ducked up in the air, it was flopping and flipping and it was an easy pick. And, uh, they were all patting the guy in the back on the sidelines. Like way to go, dude. And it's like, dude, it just came right to me. Like, how could you not catch that? But anyway, they never really showed the backside camera angle, and I really wanted to see it because it looked like possibly that defender coming off the edge had grabbed or hit his hand, but they never addressed it. They never went back to investigate it, and I still haven't seen that. I don't know if, if you caught on to that at all, but I, I was like, he had got, that had to be tipped. Someone had to touch his arm because that was just a really, really bad play, and after those two really good games by Jordan, I just was I was finding it hard to believe that 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 he would just throw uh, an air ball up there, call five hundred, and and hope our guys get it. Like if it's truly was on Jordan, and that was an ugly ball. I don't know something that's just uh, that's just as Aaron used to say, piss poor. But that's just awful. And I really want to go back and and kind of cross reference that because I thought it was a uh, I thought it was a tip ball, but. That's just me, but uh, it, the, the, you could maybe do a deeper dive into that investigation or investigate how Italian Tommy DeVito's <laughs> agent is. I know that's been uh, I think one hundred and twenty percent. Is that possible? Uh, uh, I think you can only get to one hundred percent, but he might be a hundred 
in one percent Italian. I'm not sure today. Definitely. Um, <laughs> but you know, that said, I mean, we we talked about it. We lived it right after that the game late Monday night. We didn't want to talk about it. I know I didn't. I, want, I know I wanted to hit the hay like immediately <laughs> after finishing that because um, I felt just gross. Like you felt dirty. You needed to shower after that game. That's how bad it was. Um, you know, the, the special teams was God awful. There were some bad calls in them. I will say that, uh, what was it? A, a call on the blind side block or, um, Anthony Johnson jr. On special teams. It was terrible. It wasn't that at all. Uh, we talked about the Rudy Ford one when the guy just runs into him, he's not even looking and Rudy Ford gets called, but you know, you miss extra points. You, 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 muff, the ball. you, you muff, you know, punts. I mean, you can't do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then the Matt LaFleur play calling that, that, I mean, how many jet sweeps <laughs> do you have to do until you know it doesn't work because <laughs> you, you because you can't pull anything else of the, out of the bag, Tim. I mean, they're like, oh, we don't have Christian. Let's just uh, do the jet sweep to yeah, uh, Jane Reed. To Jane times. Reed. And, and, and let's do it on a two point conversion, too, where it's going to get stuffed and he's going to end up in concussion protocol. <laughs> let's do that. You know, like. And, and it was, in it was the, so sad. Renan, in the, in the press conference, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was yesterday, but Matt LeFleur says on that jet sweep that, uh, he he alluded to two blocks that didn't get engaged correctly, and if those were executed executed properly, uh, Jaden we would have Jaden Reed would have walked in. That's that's that was his comment. So it's oh, like really because yeah, I know there's eleven guys on each side of the ball today, but it looked like they had fifteen guys closing <laughs> that thing down in the corner. So I'm not quite sure about that one, Matt. Um, yeah, have a better play call than that, Matt. I mean, let's just be honest. It was garbage he can say what he wants to say about it but it was a bad call and he just needs to own it um because he certainly you know in some of these pressers since he he, he didn't bury joe barry but he kind of did without saying it like basically guys you know he's calling and guys also not playing through their responsibilities that there need to be a better play calls let's also talk about joe's defense take you know you got tommy devito he's been sacked 28 times this year the packers Again, we talked about on the first take, zero sacks. They didn't run a single exotic look. They're just like, yeah, we're, we're playing three, four defense. We'll rush three or four every down and we'll be fine. And, the, you know, the Giants basically said, they're not going to send anything at me. So we can run Tommy. We'll just run right through this. They, they saw it. They knew they weren't going to send pressure. And he was going to have all day to just, you know, move up in the pocket and then take off. If nothing's there. Um, it was bad to I mean how do you how do you run a defense like that on that last drive when they're playing prevent I saw somebody screenshot it on one of the plays again they're back the cornerbacks and the wide receivers are separated by nine or more yards at the snap Tay. I mean that's shooting fish in a barrel all you got to do is go run a six yard dig you're getting the ball and, and you've got some space to run I mean it's incredible and that's, yeah, that's how a wide receiver gets down in, in the field goal position moments because you, you call garbage defense like that. That whole game was so poorly called. It just makes you, again, thinking about it, it makes you want to throw up in your mouth. Again, I can't believe that. And they had the opportunity to beat that team. That's how bad they played. And yeah, Tommy DeVito <laughs> had like a one point, 107 point whatever quarterback rating. That's only because, because the Packers sucked. He wasn't great. But he had a good rating because, you know, they didn't pressure him ever. They let him run wherever they wanted, and they gave up another 200 yards on the ground. Yeah, he's Saquon. Run where you want, Tommy. Put that put that yardage under your feet because you're you're the new undrafted free agent quarterback god in the NFL. Or here, here's here's uh, God giving you a gift. You're playing the Green Bay Packer. Joe Barry defense. <laughs> they were the get right team, you know, like we were the wall and they threw the pasta and it stuck right on us, right on our face. I mean, these, these Packers, the last two games prior were making the plays. Every play seemed to kind of like work and click and we got them this time around, Ren, nothing. They it didn't, nothing went their way. And it was poor execution. So it's really, it's just, it's this rubber band swinging pendulum, 
metaphor or whatever you want to say, but when we're back on the other side now, nothing went away. We we played terrible. Uh, execution was down. Play calling was awful. Um, and it's just like, it, it's... I, I tried to warn people about this and, and we're back here again calling for Joe Barry's head, um, you know, demanding he's not, he doesn't come back next season, uh, questioning Matt LaFleur again. It's like, we're, we're back here again. And, and I was afraid of this. Um, so I think we just put this Giants game behind us. We look forward and, you know, we're back to let's put together some wins here. Let's not worry about the playoffs and just put some, put some wins together play some good football, get back on track to be back to where we were a couple of weeks ago. Um, because now Ren, it's, th- this is real. It's real. Now we have to win. If you do want to keep going, uh, especially in the playoffs, uh, it's, it's now, it's now or never. Um, you can't look past games. This was a game that you, you know, it's like, okay, we all kind of chalked it up to a win. It didn't happen. We fell flat, uh, didn't perform. But now, now the pressure's a little bit on. Is that is that something that's going to light a fire under this Packers team or not? Um, I guess we will find out. But you know, you don't have a terrible team coming in town um, this Sunday. They're not the best either. Same record as you. But you know, this is a good test here if you can bounce back from a terrible performance uh, and and look to the future. You know, build confidence in yourself. Still, you, you kind of had it, then you lost it. Uh, I don't know, but now, now we're dealing with more adversity because we just have another slew of Packers injuries that got put on the list this week, Ren. So n- now you're you're adding to that kind of that that it was shrinking laundry list of injuries, but now you're adding to it, and you got a big depleted wide receiver room. You know, Matt Lafleur says, "Too bad, so sad." Next guy up, but when you look down, you're like, "Okay, well." Maybe we will see Samari Toure more. Um, who, who knows? Maybe we'll see those, you know, the Jonathan Taylor catch more out of the backfield. I don't know, but uh, Jonathan Taylor, he's on our team. Uh, now? Patrick Taylor, Patrick Taylor. I mean, I kept calling him that during the game on Monday night. I don't know why, uh, but I don't know. I guess like, how are you feeling now that you 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 see these additional injuries? Um, kind of a weaker wide receiver room than we've ever had. And uh, these games are becoming more meaningful. I don't know, Tim. I mean, the, inter- in- the injury thing we're going to certainly talk about going into um, obviously Sunday. And it's always a position group or two. And this year it seems to be the wide receivers and the cornerbacks. And for a number of weeks, I think they got away with it. And you're like, oh, Valentine, Valentine. You know, run out who Malik Heath's out there. I mean, shoot, we're, we're going to make it work in these groups. And, and it has. Seems the wide receivers losing the speed element. Certainly, suddenly it's like Matt LaFleur's like, well, um, let me, th- you know, if I've got a 30 page playbook, let me tear out, you know, 20 of those pages and let's get back down to basics, you know, because we don't have one speed guy. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's, it concerns me, but it doesn't because they've, they've, done enough with that i mean i guess the one positive i'll take from monday is continued development of tucker craft i mean you you haven't had musgrave there and crafts coming along today yeah i mean yep heck yeah i mean you know next guy up mentality i know you you mentioned the lafleur comment on that <clears throat> and it was literally matt lafleur saying i think anytime you have more guys that continue to go out certainly put some stress on you quote unquote but it's also an opportunity for other guys. We've got other guys in that locker room who would jump at the chance to be out on the field and contribute. And, and again, that's true, but that's not what you want. No, right. Um, yeah, you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you just thought even watching the game on Monday. Yeah. They, they, they're missing some guys, some important guys, but they were the last many weeks as well. And they seem to put together some better game plans and survive with what they have. And, and I just don't think the game plan went along with it. Today. Yeah. Again, I think they dumbed it way down uh, when they, they could have, you know, still, you know, been in play action and taken six, seven, eight here and, and let the guys cook, you know, when they get the ball in their hands. And, and I don't think he really, Matt 
And that being he gave the offense the opportunity to do that. I really don't think he utilized the guys in the field with what he had. It was, again, a lot of, you know, three down game where they ran twice and passed once. And, you know, I like the, you know, the mentality where they, you know, win the coin toss this week and the coin toss, as we like to say, and they elected to receive. It Mm -hmm. didn't work out, but hey, go go take the ball and score. That's, I think that should be the mentality of this team. We're not, we're not your underdog. We're, we're going to go set tempo. I, I like that part, but then go call better game. I mean, he, how he called such great games the three weeks prior, and they kind of like got better with each game to go back to that was just, it was befuddling and difficult again to watch and then then watch it be executed as poorly uh, being as basic as it was with Jordan uh, leading offense. I, th- I think they started off this game with the same play they did the week before that uh, kind of toss to Jaden Reed um, mm-hmm. coming across. I think it was the same play. They just were pointing the wrong or the other direction this time. I was like, there's, I, I don't know. You know, at that time I was like, is this a good omen or a bad omen? Like they ran the, pl- the same play twice. Like I, at, you know, at the start of the, of each game, um, I didn't know how to feel about that, and I guess maybe this is why I didn't know because I was like, "Ooh, like, is this gonna uh, kind of like be a foreshadowing piece to this game?" And it, I guess it, it ultimately was. I do like you. You know, you brought up Kraft, and um, I think a lot of people were highlighting his, you know, coming on uh, as a very positive thing, and it totally is. I mean, this guy immediately took the place of Musgrave, uh, didn't miss a step. I think. Actually, if, if he gets in the end zone um, lately, like this last game or games prior, I mean, the buzz on this kid would be through the roof. But I think just because he only had, I mean, he only had four receptions for 64 yards. That was huge. He, he's coming in at clutch times. But if he would have gotten a touchdown or two in the last few games, I think this this kid would be um, talked about a lot more and, you know, maybe over overkill, but... Um, yeah, I just I think he would his his uh his popular meter would be going through the roof, um and I, they they spread the ball around a little bit. You saw Samari Toure. I was like, holy crap! I I kind of forgot about Toure, but now he's you know two two receptions for twenty two yards, um and I think they uh, threw at him a couple more than that, so four times. Uh, you probably see a lot more of him. And just because maybe Wicks is out, I think he's got that ankle injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reed with the concussion, it's like, ah, what's going to happen here? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I think I agree with you. I think this team it will get through this injury adversity. Um, I just like to have this season. I'm not too worried about it. It just it stinks because you have no idea the timetable on some of this stuff. Um, Watson, who knows how long he's going to be out. Uh, are we getting uh, Aaron Jones back? Will we have Wicks and Reed? Uh, it's just like two. It's a lot of question marks um, on this offense, and and uh, you know it, it, you can always make it a narrative and make it a storyline for Jordan Love, who kind of needs these guys. And I I did like I forgot who said it in the broadcast, but um, I'm glad, and I, I agree with the um, either either it was Joe Buck or Troy Aikman said, you know all these guys are two years experience or less. And I, I particularly like that for Jordan. He doesn't have to pick favorites. He doesn't have to feed a certain guy or a certain ego on the team. All these guys are kind of uh, uh, the same, you know? Maybe not skill-wise, but they're all kind of like the same uh, prestige level, I guess. And, you know, this this will just be another chapter in that this week when they when you have some of these other guys coming up. Uh, Heath, you'll see Toure out there. Uh, Dobbs, of Bo course. Me- a Bo Melton signing could, ha- uh, a Melton. Signing could happen, Tay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. Grant DuBose could make an appearance. And, and you know, you got, you got Kraft, and I think you also get DeGuara back. I think he came off the injury list. So who's that? Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I don't even know if we need to see him. I, honestly, Tay, I'd, I'd rather see Henry Pearson out there. Yeah, I know. Much, I ra- know. much rather. Totally. But, he's you know, been, uh, he's been he's been effective in the very limited time he's He's been out there, and I, again, I at this point the Josiah DeGuara experiment is over. He's not going to be on this team in a few weeks, and just yeah, don't even bother. Nope, nope, nope. But I will say, you know, the craft thing too. Going back to that, it, it's not just like hey, craft's incredible, but when you couple that with obviously Musgrave 
when you get into next year and we don't want to get there yet, but wow, you, you got a lot of these, you know, both these young guys, a lot of experience year one. And, and that can only, you know, wow, this, this young tight end group, you, you got something there Tay. It's, it's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. And then I know, I know you don't, you don't want to talk about next year, but then you think about it and you're like, yeah, it, it does make you feel good. And uh, hopeful for the future if you can you know add to that room or give these guys another couple of years experience uh, under their belt so it's it's nice i love to see that i i really think that touchdown piece if 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 he would get touchdowns i think we we we'd be talking about him the next robert tunyon you know what i mean um, oh, he's he's already better than the the previous Robert Tunyon. He is, but you know how t- Tunyon really only you know skyrocketed into people's uh, you know ears and eyes around the nation because he had all those touchdowns that year. Yeah, that one big year, he had a bunch of touchdowns. Yep. So, uh, anything uh, giant to talk about this game anymore, Red? <sighs> well, like I said, it was. Didn't even need to be relived, but you know we kind of had to touch base on it because it, it is what it is. But uh, yeah. we could have we could have saved ourselves a lot of uh, you know less holiday stress reliving that. Uh, like I said, that dumpster fire from Monday night. God, it was awful. Yeah. Well, but, it, uh, in, in reviewing it, we kind of you know you do get to talk about it, and we just did this the kind of the state of the Packers and how this team is at the moment and. Um, I think we're definitely back in the, huh? Like what's happening with this team kind of mode? Uh, regressing a bit instead of moving forward. We we were the hot t- team, Ren, going into the playoff run. And now we're like, eh, are we even going to make it? So I, it's uh, it's definitely been a roller coaster. And I think it's going to continue to be, Tay. Let's be honest. The way the NFC sets up at this point, Tay, the Bears at five and eight, I believe they are. Uh, sit right outside the playoff watch. So anything can happen over the last four weeks. Uh, that's uh, how sad it is in the NFC. So let's get to the yuck and ears day, our, our good old NFC central rival. Uh, a lot of uh, fun memories. We have of Warren Sapp and Brett Favre um, back in the day. And this <laughs> yeah, was a, a lot more, of fun. more uh, common thing going on and a lot of trash talk, but uh, uh, definitely one of the more common opponents they faced over the last four years outside of the Rams. Um, but yeah, you got two six and seven teams t- fighting for their playoff lives, even though the Buccaneers are technically leaders of the NFC South at six, and yeah, seven, yeah. the three, a three way tie, but they, I think they hold the tiebreakers. So um, the Bucks have won two straight looking for their first three game win streak on the season today. What, if anything, do you know about this version of the Buccaneers with our guy Baker? We faced last year with the Rams. Um, you know, it's just kind of a new look Buccaneers after Tom uh, decided finally to actually really hang them up. And now they're getting back to their, their old classic, uh, you know, creamsicle selves where they're not so good and more like the bucks of the past that we know and love. Yeah. I, I, I just been, I've been hearing things about this team just in the peripheral and the periphery. And I don't know a ton about them. I know that they, obviously they're six and seven. They're, they're leading their division, but again, they're, yeah, like you said, they're in a three way tie, but they're, that's what they're fighting for here. They're fighting for the top seed in their division. So They've got a lot to play for. Um, not that we don't, but uh, we're not fighting for the first spot in the division, uh, and that's and possibly a home game, right? I mean, with their score, I don't. I, I think they do. They would get a, a home game. Um, yeah, is this like a crappy division in fantasy football today that you <laughs> somehow uh, luck no, into a, no. a home game and a better seed just because you want a craptastic division? No, 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 this, you know, okay. this, this okay. comes up every, every like several years when one of the divisions stinks and everyone's below 500 and we always ask ourselves, uh, why do we do this? Um, but it still continues to go forward. But, um, yeah, I mean, that is a question we could ask ourselves about the NFL is do we even need this division system anymore? Like, do you really you know, the rival need to be reseeded. You have a division system. The division winner gets in 
And then potentially then do they receive this thing. Yeah, then you'd have to have a receiver. A receiver. But yeah, do you, you know, or you just go straight on, straight by record and just have two, you know, conferences with, you know, the top seven get in. And uh, why bother? Why even bother? Uh, but I think we all love our regional rivalries still. I think that's a part of, it's been a part of this league for a long, long time. And I don't think you, uh, that would be a hard change. So um, I don't know. I, you know, a six and seven team, uh, kind of like at the head of their division, they're fighting for it. So yeah, there, there's a lot on the line for this Bucks team. I mean, Baker oh, Mayfield sure. is, um, I, I didn't think he was great in Cleveland, and then he went out to the Rams, kind of said, "Hey, no, I, I can, I can play." And then he got signed with the Bucks, and I think he's been doing okay. I don't, I really haven't been paying attention, but um, it's it, it's be, it's definitely not like a you know. He, he wasn't a flash in the pan. Like he he's turning out to be an average, decent quarterback at times, um, at least to lead your team to you know the top of your division here. But uh, you got obviously Mike Evans, who's a stud on on at wide receiver. Chris Godwin's been around for a while too. Um, so you have a few weapons. This isn't the team of old where you had um, you know Brady and Gronkowski. Um, but I don't know, like the. The, the the defense I don't know a ton about. There's a couple veterans here and there, um, you know, from even from the 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 Brady days uh, holdover. But uh, I think this team is redefining themselves, just like a lot of NFC South teams are. Um, and then, well, especially Carolina. I mean, they're trying to figure that out themselves. But the Falcons and the Saints are um, doing decently to try to like get their identity and to figure out who they are. And the bucks are too. And you got to hand it to them. That's why I'm not taking this lightly. And I think you're about to say, you're about to say the same thing. Uh, and you shouldn't look past this game. You can't, uh, think that because the Buccaneers are coming to green Bay where it historically has been cold for them and they haven't done well. Uh, like you can't really address that that way, but, I'm looking for a, the Packers to be the best that they can be here. Uh, shake off last game. Get back to what, where they were against, you know, the Chiefs and the, the Lions. And give us a good game. Give us something to be proud of, even if maybe you don't squeak this one out. Uh, at least you get, uh, you can hold your head high and, and, and have this team look decent and, and backed away that they were a couple weeks ago. No doubt, Jay. I mean, I don't think you can play much, much worse than you did Monday night. And yeah, we're looking for them to look like a competent football team in some phases of the football because in all three last week, they didn't. Right. I mean, obviously, they're coming off of MLF, as you like to call them, his first uh, loss in December right. in his tenure as the Packers head coach. We have the Bucks to a little dope sheet for you. Yeah. Dating back to 1990, the Packers are 14 and one today <laughs> against the Bucks at home in the regular season, with 12 of the 15 contests being decided by single digits, including two overtime games. We talked a little bit about, yes, the mash unit that is the Green Bay Packers wide receiver core. Jaden Reed and Wicks were hurt in Monday night's loss. Um, obviously without Watson as well, they're pretty short-handed. That could leave us to Heath, Toure, and Debose off the P squad, uh, to go along with uh not much else day. So with Tucker out there, so it, it could be real tight and tenuous when it comes to the Packer offensive pass catchers, but it sounds like uh Jaden Reed is going to be able, Jaden Reed's going to be able to play today. Okay. His quote uh, from Monday is, I got up and they just brought me into the tent for some reason and told me I had to go in for some reason. Reed said, I went in, just followed the precautions, and everything's all good. That's his quote, I believe, today. So he's like, I didn't have a concussion, but I thought I did, so I went into it. But <laughs> that's basically what he's saying. But you had the, on the opposite end of things, you had, our other guy, Dontavian Wicks, who's really come 
gotten hot down the stretch and become, you know, one of those kind of intermediate pass catchers, you know, that 15, 20 yard out, he's been phenomenal. He does have a little extra speed, which they clearly need to, um, Lauren Helbreck reported that Wicks in the locker room stated that his ankle was effed up Tay. Great. F'd great. Up. That was his, his words, uh, but a little bit more colorful, not the effed up Tay. Mm. It was, uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the thinking rest I'm, of the, uh, yeah. the parts there. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. It's like duck you, but, uh, something else. All right. Um, <laughs> now, so that puts us with obviously Dobbs leads the Packers with 49 receptions, but Next four players could be out. Reed, well, he's going to play. Musgrave, 33 catches. Watson, 28. And Wicks, 25. So, yeah, it's going to be tough just kind of figuring the game plan that suits the receivers you're going to have on the field. Um, yeah, you mentioned two, six, and seven teams. So, this game means a ton to both teams today. Um, but at the very least, to be thankful for, and you don't wish harm on anyone, but the Buccaneers today have. Cornerback Carlton Davis did not practice. Jamal Dean, cornerback, he was limited. Defensive lineman Will Goldston did not practice. Wide receiver Chris Godwin did not practice. Safety Ryan Neal did not practice. Their long, long snapper, Tay, did not practice. Uh, last week didn't play, and today did not practice. The, the super heady nose tackle Vita Vea, not available. And the other linebacker we've talked about a lot in the last few years when it was Tommy time, Devin White was also a did not practice. So they've got a whole lot of issues with a whole lot of really important cogs for the Bucks. Also, probably not going to be available come Sunday, Tay. So it's going to be two teams fighting for their playoff lives with a lot of pieces they'd like to have in the field, not there. So it makes you feel at least a little bit better when it comes to that. Yeah. And um, I think um, I, I heard uh, out there that, you know, they do give up sacks, the Bucks. So, you know, hopefully Gary and company can get to the quarterback this week rather than just pretend to like last week. Um, the other side on the offensive oof. side, I think, what is it? Rashad White. Is that, is that how you say his name? Um, that is the guy, Rashad White Tay. He is ranked third in the NFL in total yards from scrimmage this season, dude. Tay. That is, he only trails two guys. One really should be an MVP candidate. That's the Niners, Christian McCaffrey. And the other is the Jags, Travis Etienne. So uh, Rashad has had a nice uh, run of games the last three weeks 125 yards against the Colts in week 12, 128 against the Panthers. Not hard to do. And then finally last week had 148 yards uh, against the Falcons. It's a little worrisome, Ren. I mean, we that's uh, one of our Joe deficiencies. Barry, you're telling me you're you're afraid? I'm scared. This I mean, you know, with the momentum going in that direction for this Bucks team to be a heavy run, or at least like getting some production on it, uh team, uh the yeah, that that scares me. I think uh, we're in we're in trouble if we can't do something about that. So they are top 10 in sacks allowed today. You're right. But uh, pass yards, <clears throat> they're 20th in the NFL. Rushing yards, they're 29th. But again, getting hot and playing the right team at the right time when it comes to that. Points scored, they're 22nd with 20.2. Pass yards against, they're 30th. Rush yards against, they're 10th. So they, they're heady against the run. Obviously, Vita Vea not being there, that uh, helps a little bit. And <clears throat> points allowed, to, um, I think they are also 10th at 20.8. Um, the Bucks D- DBs today, not great last week against Desmond Ritter. So this is a team today with a lot of veteran presence. You know, we, we've heard all these same names four years ago when the Packers and right. Bucks were battling for NFC dominance. Um, just a lot of, it's a, it's a veteran team. Um, they're getting old and they got issues and those DBs, they allowed 347 yards to Ritter last week. And, uh, finally Drake London woke up and had 10 for 172 today, um, against their, their defensive backfield. So, um, there, there's definitely, even if you're playing, you know, Malik Heath and Bo Melton and Grant DuBose and, 
Jaden Reed, you're, you're still going to have some opportunity against this Bucks pass defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- this this game is is in the Packers' grasp. Like they can take this if they want this. I I really truly believe that. Truly believe that they they have what it takes. We've seen it. We have actually seen this. Um, you know, I I don't know what what kind of mindset that the Packers were in when they played the Lions and the Chiefs, but that's exactly the mindset they need to be playing in every game. I don't know what happened in the, at the Giants. You really had to just say like that was a bad day, right? For a lot of people on that Packer in that Packers organization and the players too. It's like how, how does that happen? That's a a topic and a and a question to answer some other time, but like they just can't show up like this. And this game can be won. They just have to I don't know, like get their together. Uh and it, and it can be done. So I I'm delaying here because i don't know who to pick <laughs> who to pick in this in this i mean <laughs> hist- historically it says the packers will win um uh, the the bucks are coming up and uh, they don't do very well in green bay in uh, december in december so uh, i i'm gonna I'm well, just, i wish i had the, i wish i had the dope seat dope sheet stat on the bucks in green bay in december it was pretty pretty god awful historically today it was not good I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna play the the homer card. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Packers, um, and they're going to win by three points. It's gonna be <clears throat> twenty seven to thirty. Packers win over Green over uh, over the Buccaneers. Oh, that's a big score, Jay. I'm gonna go four points, but I'm gonna go twenty one seventeen, Jay. Uh, pack. What do you say is the line, Tay? What is the line? The line. Uh, man, both these teams have the same record. Um, I still think, I still have a, a hunch that Vegas thinks they're, the Packers are still better than they showed on Monday night. So this, this it's got to be straight, pretty much even, but then you get like the three to the home team. So I think it's three Packers. It is three and a half, Jay. Packs getting home in the push. Yeah, three and a half yep. for the pack. That's about right. I think. Um, I think this game is a coin flip, and I think everyone knows it. What do you say? Like, you think you think this is going to go down with the Packers win, or are you just being I, yeah, optimistic? Like I said, I'm going twenty. I'm going I know, but... Jay, I really hope that, like I talked about with the god awfulness we had to talk about right after that game, if they didn't learn anything and get themselves up, being like, wow, if we don't we don't really play our asses off every game. We're not going to win and, and go give the home crowd something to cheer for. So that, that's a big piece too. You got a cold weather team coming up to green Bay. You know, it's not going to be super cold, but let me tell you these bucks guys hitting, they, they haven't, they were just in a dome last week today. They haven't been anywhere to experience anything that's in the thirties it's not going to be pleasant to them. We're, we're acclimated to it already. We're like, Oh, when it's 40, like it will be tomorrow. We're going to be like, damn, that's a nice day. Trust me. They're going to come up here and be like, Ooh, we're the Buccaneers. So take advantage of it. They'll, the Packers will have the right cleats on a lot of teams coming to this field and they don't. don't have the right cleats on slip and slide over this thing. Cause it gets a little, it gets a little slippery when it's cool out there. Um, I just think it's, it's advantage pack and give your home team, I mean, give your your home fans something to cheer for, and and hopefully Jordan plays a hundred percent better than he did last week because he he owes the fans a better performance. Uh, one more thing before we head out here, Ren. Um, it's it's Pro Bowl voting time, and you can go out there and cast your vote for you know whoever you want to. Uh, uh, vote for the, being in the Pro Bowl. Um, actually, if you if you go, we do have a website, PackerUniverse.com, and if you go over there, I put a little link there that you can follow. <clears throat> to, to it'll bring you over to NFL.com or something, and you can vote if you want to. But um, that's just a side note. But Ren, my question is, who is there anybody on this Packers team right now that has played well enough to represent the NFC at their position this year? <laughs> I was, as you're saying that, I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm like, I'm going through position <laughs> groups in my head. I'm like, where is this? You no, know, no, yeah, no. I this no, pop no, quiz. No, no, I'm like going through offensive line. Nope, I'm going through defensive line. I'm like, nah. I'm going through cornerback safeties. 
middle linebackers. You got nothing, edge rushers, you? Uh, you know, obviously pass catchers, running backs, quarterback. And like, you know, I think a couple weeks ago, based on the play, and I think it, it still, yeah, it should be a pro bowler is Rashawn Gary. But outside of that day, Nope, 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 <laughs> like, nope, nobody else. Nobody else is in a Pro Bowl not either because they, they haven't played enough games or they just haven't been good enough. <laughs> Can you say the 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 long snapper, Orzic, Orzech? Uh, who knows, who knows? It, it, you know, Keyshawn hasn't done anything in the return game, so it's like, no. like that would have been nice if he would have you know he was doing something this year you could vote for him but uh yeah otherwise i agree with you rashawn gary is pretty much the only one that deserves even a, a consideration uh vote from this packers team and and i guess that kind of that kind of says it you know a lot doesn't it um, well it says a couple things like yeah they're just really not that great but also i know there's a lot of places too where these guys just haven't been available man i mean yeah. i mean it's been it's been a tough, tough year with the injuries, but, um, last one outside of the Packers say, I found it interesting today that, that piece on, uh, the old ball coach, the goat, and then lost the goat and isn't the goat. Now it was always, you know, I made that argument to you on past shows in the past, like when everybody anointed Mr. Belichick, the greatest head coach in NFL mm-hmm. history. And I, mm-hmm. I thought that was a little bit of an affront to what Vince Lombardi did, you know, basically with what, six championships and, seven, eight years in the sixties, um, be it NFL championships. And then, then it started the Super Bowl um, era thereafter, but um, Bill without Tom, not so great. And it's apparently been reported, you know, and confirmed with somebody really in the know out in New England that Bill will not be brought back in New England. Um, <laughs> and they'll be moving on in a different direction. What do you think about that choice uh, for the Patriots? And, you know, talking about the, you know, obviously we talked about Bill and Tom for so many years and, you know, he's still quite a ways away now with, uh, getting, getting that last, I don't know, 40 or so wins to become the all-time winning as head coach. I, I just think nothing lasts forever. You can't have things perpetually be great all the time. Like, like Bill Belichick was a great coach <laughs> in his tenure, right? Like with Brady, Sure. Like it was all there. It was all the, the, all the ingredients were there and it was just a masterpiece for a long time. they were, they sustained greatness because I, you know, yes, Tom Brady was good, but I think Bill Belichick had that team um, the way he wanted it and he was really good at it. So I, there's a lot of credit for Bill. I think he still is one of those, you know, top three, top five coaches of all time in the NFL for sure. I mean, he got it done. Like he, he had a system that worked. He could bring anybody in that system. They they bought into it, and he got production out of people. He got production out of, off of retreads that you should never get uh, production off of. Um, it, he, he had a system there. People could come into that to his system and and work. Um, so yeah, I, a lot of credit goes to him. I hate saying that, but the dude is the dude was a great coach. So now why is this why why is this all of a sudden this huge to me it seems like a huge fall from grace. It's like, "Oh, he's trash now. We're going to get rid of him." It was all Brady. I just I don't know what's happening there. It, you know, nothing does last forever. Things do break down and I think finally, you know, over what is it, 20 years or something like that, almost 15 years, uh it's finally broken down. You just it's just like the Favre, I'm sorry with him too, but just like the Rogers relationship with the Green Bay Packers, it just, it was going to end. It has to end sometime. Um, that's what's happening here. It's just, it's not working out. He doesn't have the right guys or they're not buying into it. All these moving parts are, aren't all in synchronicity and it just breaks down after time. So this is an inevitable situation. Um, the way they cast him off will be, you know, its own thing. And I think it sounds like they're just like, ah, we're done. Like this team, you know, sucks. We, we didn't make the playoffs. Get rid of them. It's like, I think maybe they're overreacting. You know, if, if he's such a great coach, give him some time, give him some different players, whatever you have to do. But um, it sounds like they want to move on for other reasons and that's fine. Um, 
is he too old to do anything else? Maybe he'll just quit and yeah. hang it up for good. But, you know, you, you see those like, oh, it's a, Bill Belichick's going to be the next Packers defensive coordinator, and it's going to rock. And it's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Bill's going anywhere to be a coordinator today. No. Um, I think his head coach are bust. And I think, you know, the Patriots are just like, hey, you know, we've done this for over 20 years. It's, it is time for that that team to go in a different direction look different and put a new face on it and entirely, you know, I had two faces there for a long time, but I really do believe that, you know, excellent quarterback play makes a coach look a lot better. Um, and I think bill had the benefit of that. And I think you, if you look back in the NFL annals of history, um, most of these head coaches had that. I mean, you look back at, you know, what, Joe Montana did for his coaches. You look at what Dan Marino did for Don Shula, getting, you know, the all-time winning record first. Um, obviously, Dan didn't bring home the Super Bowls, but he brought home a lot of, lot of wins for Don Shula. Um, you know, and you look, you, again, you look at a lot of these all-time winning coaches. The It was the quarterback play that, that got them there inevitably. So, yes, Bill is a part of that, and so was Tom. But without... Tom Bill is never what what Bill has become and what he was. So yeah, um, yeah. I think I think the two go kind of hand in hand. But you know, when suddenly you know Bill didn't have Tom anymore, they made the playoffs once in what four years and been one of the worst teams since. So. Yeah, yeah. But we're not shedding any tears over in Green Bay here. That's for sure. Nope, but it is a legacy NFL thing, so that's why I want to talk about it. Sure. So. Well, Ren, uh, thanks for joining me tonight on the Com Links. We appreciate everyone listening in. Uh, head over to our website, check it out. Send us an email, info at packeruniverse.com. Check us out on socials, and uh, yeah, tell a friend about us and uh, that we're here every week talking about the Packers. Thanks for listening. Take us out, Ren. Yeah, until episode 252, Tay, that's a two and one only pro bowler, 52 Rashawn Gary, Tay, on the pup list.